SMTP or Simple Message Transport Protocol is a standard for transmitting email across IP networks. Now that's probably not news to you guys listening to this as SMTP has been around for a while, around the early 70s to be quite blunt. Still, in IIS 7 we can use the SMTP feature to allow us to send email from our web server to other mail servers. Now even though the SMTP feature is basically free, since it's included with your Server 2008 license, this doesn't mean that you can do away with Exchange or whatever mail server you might be running. This is definitely not a replacement for a real enterprise mail application. But where this SMTP server is useful is for smaller applications that require mail functionality, such as things like emailing you the result of a script that ran overnight, or backups perhaps, or the results of monitoring applications or SQL jobs and so forth. Now in IIS 7 though, SMTP really hasn't changed at all from what we had in IIS 6. In fact, it still uses the old IIS 6 console like the standard FTP service. So if you've used the SMTP service in IIS 6, then you might want to skip this video because you'll be right at home here. So the first thing we'll need to do in order to use the SMTP service is to install it as a feature. So in our server manager up here on the left hand side we'll click on features. Then over on the right we'll click add features and this will start up the add feature wizard. So we'll scroll down and we'll select our SMTP server and this will also require the remote server administration tools as a dependency so we'll choose to add those in as well. Then we'll click next and then install. Now this will take a few moments so we'll pause the video here and once the SMTP server feature has been installed we'll be back. Alright it's done so we'll click close and now we'll click on start we'll choose administrative tools and we'll launch the IIS 6 console not the 7 one since you'll find that there's no reference to SMTP in the 7 console. So we'll expand our server here, SO5, and in fact I'll expand the console too. And down here you can see there's SMTP. And if we expand this, you'll see two sub-options, domains and current sessions, just like you'd expect to see in IIS 6. So let's right-click on our SMTP virtual server, and you can see that we can start, stop, and pause the SMTP server. And down the bottom we'll choose Properties. And we can immediately see the fully qualified domain name of this server, which in my case is simply SO5, as this server that I'm working on right now is a standalone machine at this point. And just like with our IIS websites, we could choose which network interface to use with this SMTP server, or just leave the default and allow the SMTP service to access any IP address on this machine. Now we can choose to limit the number of connections to this SMTP server if we like, and down the bottom we can enable logging as well and for a detailed account about these logging types you can check out our IIS 6 videos and that way you should be able to understand the differences between these types of logs. Now at the top on the access tab we're able to select what type of authentication we want to use and we can do things like perform connection control and IP addresses and right down the bottom here we can grant or deny relay permissions through this SMTP virtual server. Now the good news is that the default is to only allow this list below here access to relay through this virtual server and since by default this list is blank that means that no computer is allowed to relay through this SMTP server. So if you want computers to be able to use this feature then you'll need to manually edit this list and that's great since it's much more secure by default than previous versions of Windows. Now the other two important tabs up here are the Messages tab and the Delivery tab. Firstly with our Messages tab we're able to limit messages and sessions to specific sizes and these values that you see here are all in kilobytes. Now we could also limit the number of messages per connection as well as the number of recipients that a message can be sent to and that's useful for blocking a lot of potential spam. Now on the delivery tab we can specify retry intervals for failed messages. We've got a first retry interval, a second and so forth. Again exactly the same as we saw in IIS 6 so there's nothing really new to see here. 
Now if we click on domains, we can see here the domain for which this SMTP service is currently configured. And again, my machine isn't part of a domain, so we only have the host name SO5 here. But this is where you'll see the fully qualified domain name for this machine. So if this machine were part of the winstructorlab.com domain, then we'd expect to see so5.winstructorlab.com as the fully qualified domain name for this machine. Okay, well that's the SMTP service in IIS 7, which is exactly the same as what we saw previously in IIS 6. So really nothing new has changed at all. And as a result, if you want to add the SMTP feature to your Windows 2008 server, then you'll be configuring SMTP services from the IIS 6 console as we've just seen. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.